Hi grades three to five. So let's get started on a read aloud. We have about three to four pages left until we finish this book. Okay, so go grab your colors and your doodle books and let's get started. Seven, 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 Uncle Feather repeated. They can't get far on seven dollars, I said. Peter, please, Mom said. A few minutes later, Daniel's mom pulled up in our driveway in a red sports car. We think they might have gone to the lake, Dad told her. The lake, she said. Oh my goodness, Daniel can't swim. Neither can Fudge, Mom said. Yes, he can, I told her. He can doggy paddle. Peter, please. Anyway, why would they go swimming in the lake? I asked. It's too gloopy for swimming. Peter, please, Dad said. Please what? I finally asked. Please be quiet. We're thinking. Let's not waste any more time. Daniel's mom said. The sooner we start looking for them, the sooner we might find them. Warren, mom said, you go. You go with her. I'll stay here with Peter just in case they try to fawn us. When they'd left, mom asked me to bring Tootsie inside. She was still sound asleep on the lounge chair. I picked her up and carried her into the house. She opened her eyes and when she saw it was me, she smiled and said, yuck. At five, the phone rang. This is it, I thought. It's all over. They found him splattered across the road, his bike a mangled mess, or maybe the Princeton crew has found him. Maybe they've dragged him out of the lake, his face blue and swollen. I felt a big lump in my throat. If only I'd let him come on the picnic with me, none of this would have happened. If only I hadn't wanted to really punish him for, for waking me up this morning. Now it was too late. I pictured everything, fudge. All messed up in pain, tears. Peter, would you get the phone? Mom said. I picked up the receiver. Hello? I almost couldn't get the word out. How was I going to tell Mom if it was bad news? Hi, Peter. Fudge, where are you? Guess. The train station? Nope. The bus station? Nope. The police station? Nope. Do you give up? Yes. Where are you? At Sandy's Bakery. What? Sandy's Bakery? Down by the highway? Yes. You rode all the way to the highway? It was easy. Is Daniel with you? Yes. Mom grabbed the phone out of my hand. Fudgy, my angel, I'm so glad you're all right. We've been so worried. Don't move. Not an inch. We'll be right down to get you. We jumped into the car. I arranged Tootsie in her car seat and we took off. We found Dad and Mrs. We found Dad and Mrs. Tamina driving around by the lake told them the good news, and they followed us all the way to the traffic circle and the highway. Fudge and Daniel were standing outside the bakery. They looked very small. Fudge was holding a paper bag with Sandy's printed on it. Mom parked, jumped out of the car, and hugged Fudge. I'm so glad to see you. I felt another different kind of lump in my throat this time. Be careful, Mommy, Fudge said. You'll squash your brownies. When we got back to our house, Fudge settled into Mom's favorite chair and said, We went to the deli next to Sandy's for lunch. We shared up we shared a sandwich. We each had three pickles, Daniel added, relaxing in Dad's chair, and a cream soda. Mom, Dad, and Daniel's mom sat in a row on the sofa facing the runaways runaways. You know what you know that what you did today was wrong? Mom began. It was inconsiderate and foolish, Dad said. Not to mention dangerous, Mom added. And very silly, I said. And while we are very glad to see you, Daniel's mom said, we're also very angry. Very, Mom said. And you'll have to be punished, Dad said. Fudge and Daniel looked at each other. What do you suggest? Dad asked them. Put us to bed at 8 o'clock tonight, Fudge said. That doesn't seem like appropriate Appro an appropriate consequence mom said seven o'clock daniel asked yawning yes his mom told him because you're tired but that's not a suitable consequence why don't you take away their bicycles for a month i suggested expecting everyone to shout peter please suddenly the room was very quiet no fudge shouted not fair daniel howled mom 
Dad and Daniel's mom exchanged looks. I think that makes a lot of sense, Dad finally said. I think so too, Daniel's mom added. I agree, Mom said. I couldn't believe it. They'd finally taken me seriously. But how will we get to school? Fudge asked, pouting. You'll walk, Mom told him. The way you did before you had before you had bicycles. But Mommy, Fudge began, if you love me, it's because I love you, Mom said. It's because we all love you and care about you. Fudge stood up and stomped his feet. I'm sorry, I bought you I bought you any brownies. Dad took their bicycles, chained them together, and set them on a shelf in the garage. I hope you both learn that you can run away every time something happens that you don't like. Running away doesn't solve anything, Mom said. We had a good time, Daniel said. So, ha ha. And a good lunch, Fudge said. And we showed you we are old enough to ride to the lake. So there. Oh, no, you didn't, Dad said. You showed us you aren't ready for the privilege of riding your bicycles. Fudge and Daniel looked at each other again. And this time, they both started crying. We ordered pizza for supper. supper. Daniel stopped crying long enough to remind Mom, I don't eat anything with peas or onions. How could I forget? Mom said. After Daniel and his mom had gone home, Mom put her new Mozart, uh, Mozart CD on the stereo and we sat around the living room table working on our family picture puzzle. It's a mountain scene at sunset, and so far we've got one corner of it put together. Pita ran away one time, Fudge said, chewing on a piece of puzzle. I took it away from him and said, I thought about running away. But I never went through with it. I found a matching piece and snapped it into place. And Daddy ran away when he didn't want to work anymore, Fudge said, stacking up the orange pieces. What are you talking about, Dad asked. That's why we moved to Princeton, isn't it? Fudge said. No, of course not, Dad told him. Whatever gave you that idea, I figured it out myself, Fudge said. Well, that's just not true, Dad said. Then why did we come to Princeton? Fudge asked. For a change, Dad explained. That's why I wanted to go to the lake, Fudge said, for a change. Speaking of Princeton and changes, Mom said, polishing off her third brownie. Millie and George will become will be back soon and we have to decide what to do. What do you mean? I said. Well, either we have to find another house here or we have to get ready to move back to the city. You mean we have a choice? I asked. I always thought we were living in Princeton for a, for the year. And that was it. Tootsie toddled over, reached up, grabbed a handful of sunset pieces and ran away with them. Hey, come back with those, I said, chasing her across the room. I handed her a rubber mouse and she dropped the puzzle pieces. I'm not crazy about the idea of commuting, Dad said, but if the rest of you want to stay in Princeton, I'll do it. Commuting, I asked. Yes, Dad said. I'm going back to work at the agency. No more writing, I asked. Not for now, Dad said. I found out I'm not very good at it. I may never finish my book. I knew he wouldn't, but I didn't say so. I'm very good at advertising, though, Mom. Uh, Dad continued, and I'm anxious to get back to work. He looked at me, but that doesn't mean I want to be pres. I want to be president of the agency, Peter. I know, I know. I said, "What about you, Mom? What are you going to do?" Well, with Daddy going back to work at the agency, I'd like to get started on my art history classes, maybe at NYU. That's in the city, isn't it? Yes, Mom said. In yes, that's that is in the city. So you both want to go back to city? I asked. They touched hands, and Mom said, "I guess we do." What about you, Peter? Dad asked. What do you want to do? I don't know. I said I'm used to it here, but I still miss New York. I don't remember New York. Fudge said, "Of course you do." I told him. No, I don't. He said, "Can I ride my bike there?" In some places, I said, like Central Park. I remember Central Park, Fudge said. You remember our apartment, I told him. And the elevator. And Henry. Oh, that's right. I forgot about Henry and the elevator. Mom and Dad laughed. What about you, Tootsie? Fudge said. Where do you want to live? Princeton or New York? Yuck.
Tootsie said. Did you hear that? Fudge asked. Yuck, Tootsie said again. Mom and Dad exchanged surprised looks. That's Tootsie's first word, Fudge said. She wants to live in New York, too. No yuck, Tootsie said. I realized that I was the only one who knew that Tootsie had been saying yuck all day, and I wasn't about to tell them that it had nothing to do with the city. That makes it unanimous, Fudge said. What a big word, Mom said. I know a lot of big words, Fudge told her. You'd be surprised at how many big words I know. Fudgy, Mom said. You're just full of surprises. So we're going back, I thought. Back to the Big Apple. Back to our apartment. Back to Jimmy Fargo. And Sheila Tubman. And my rock in the park. Back to Walking Turtle. And back to the Pooper Scooper. But it's worth it. It's all worth it. I picked up Tootsie and swung her around. I couldn't help laughing. And Tootsie laughed too. To some people, there is no place like New York. And I guess I'm one of them. The end. Okay, so we just ended our book. I'm going to grab a new one for us. And you'll find out which one that is next time. Bye.